Welcome to this video tutorial on how to render corrugated metal in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I've set up this very simple scene which just consists of a tree, a kind of plane and this red sheet here which we're going to render as a corrugated steel facade. At the moment you can see that the render just looks like this where we've got our tree. If we just turn on our interactive render you can see it's casting a nice shadow there and then we've got these kind of two planes that make up our ground and our facade. Now in order to begin creating this material, I'm first going to open up my V-Ray Asset Editor and I'm just going to drop it to the side here and so we can see it as it renders on the right hand side in the frame buffer. Now I'm going to click on the Create Asset tab, go to Material and click Generic to create a new generic material and we're just going to call this Metal for now. Now for this particular material I'm going to be using some textures from Polyhaven I'll put a link to the description where you can download this, but I'm going to be using this factory wall material. And this comes with a series of different maps that we're going to be using to create this particular texture, as well as giving it that kind of distinctive corrugated bumpiness that will help resemble that real look to that material that we want to give it. Now once you download these maps, we're then going to go back into Rhino. And under the colour or diffuse option, we're going to click on this little map option to the right. We're going to go to bitmap here and we're going to load in this kind of factory wall material here with the little diff option which stands for diffuse or the color map and we're going to click open there. Now once that's applied we're going to see it on the preview there and then we're also going to apply it to our metal just by selecting this red wall, right clicking on a material and clicking apply to selection. Now if we go back to the render and just have a look at what this looks like when it's rendered out you'll see that we now have that texture on there but it's quite flat still and also the size of it is really big so we actually need to texture map it before moving forward. To do that I'm just going to put my frame buffer over to the right hand side here so we can see it. I'm then going to go into by selecting the object we're going to go to the properties and we're going to click on the texture mapping option here. I'm going to go to the box mapping, select that and I'm going to draw out a box which is going to represent the size of my texture. When doing this I don't really worry too much about the size of the box initially because we can always resize it and you'll see once you've drawn it you get a little preview. If you then hit enter it will then resize that texture and we can now see it on the facade. That's kind of looking right there but if you want to fine tune it you can do so in this size x y and z option here and this number here represents whatever units you're in so I'm in millimeters so I can set it to be whatever sort of millimeters I need. Usually with these textures they're square so it's good to sort of set them up as square textures so you've got roughly the same value for the x y and z and you can always type them in if you need to as well. So now I'm happy with that texture. It's now mapped correctly, but it's still looking quite flat. So we're going to give it a few more properties to give it a little bit of a bumpiness. Now to do that, I'm going to just pause my render here and we're going to open up the frame buffer again. We'll just minimize this one down and open up the asset editor. And we're going to add what's called a displacement map to this. Now to do this, it used to be you add it directly in the material, but now in V-Ray you can add this as a direct property to the object. So if I click on the plus option here to create a new asset, I'm going to go to geometries and we're going to find displacement here. Under displacement with that red object selected, I'm then going to right click and go apply to selection to apply this displacement to this. And under the mode, we've got a little option to add a map here. So I'm going to click on the map, choose my bitmap and we're going to find my disp option, DISP, which stands for displacement. Now what this essentially does, it's a black and white texture. Wherever it's white, it pushes it forward and wherever it's black, it pushes the object back, hence creating that kind of bumpy or corrugated facade in this particular instance. If I hit open there, it's then going to apply that onto my texture. Now we're not going to see a preview until we load it up and at the moment the amount is on a 1. So what will probably happen is we'll turn it on and we're not going to see a great deal of difference. This number effectively relates to the units you're using in your scene. Now I'm using millimeters, so if I just put this over here, we're going to zoom in slightly so we can see. And you can kind of see there that it's very slightly kind of pushing in and out with one millimeter difference between them. Now if I really want to ramp this up, we're going to have to change that number. So if I change this to a 10, let's say, hit enter, you'll then see we're now getting that kind of slightly prouder facade. I'm actually going to change it to a 20, 
25 in this case to really sort of push it out and emphasize that and there you can see that working now now if we just sort of pan out you can then see we're getting this nice corrugation that's going on that facade which is working quite well in this respect now you might have thing where if you kind of look up here you can see that it's slightly kind of popping out of the edge of my piece here we're also getting these bumpy edges which we're going to change but if you find it's come becoming kind of slightly too proud of the edge like it is in this case what we can always do is go back here i mean if i just to emphasize it let's put it on the 35 so we can really see that push out and if you want to pull that back you can always shift it and if we hit a minus 15 for example back here it will push the whole object back by 15 millimeters as well so you can use this to help align certain parts of the image or the displacement map to particular edges that you want to so if you push it out you can always shift it back if you need to and that won't change the kind of amount it's displaced it will just move the whole object backwards as well as this if we sort of zoom out a little bit more and i'm just gonna have to navigate multiple screens here you can kind of see with this displacement we're getting this sort of like little edge treatment here where it doesn't look super perfect it's kind of breaking up on the edges if you're having trouble with that you can just lower this edge length down if i put it on a one you'll notice here and it would take a little bit of time to refresh but it should tidy up those edges nicely and then we're going to get a nice clean edge along that particular piece here we go there it is and that's tidied it right up so if you're having trouble with those kind of broken edges always just lower that edge length it will take a little bit longer to render but you shouldn't see it too much now for the last thing i want to do for this material is i'm going to go back to the metal we're going to give it a little bit of shininess we can do this under the reflection tab now at the moment if i just up this reflection color from a black to a white we're essentially going to create a kind of mirror finish to our material now that's almost slightly too shiny i don't want it that mirrored so we're going to play around with this glossiness parameter now you'll find with the materials we've got if we go in here go to bitmap and those materials we've downloaded we don't have a glossy material instead we've got this roughness material and this is essentially the opposite of the glossy so what we can do if we want to use that roughness texture we can go in here under surface control we're going to click use roughness instead and then under this bitmap file i'm then going to input that roughness parameter and there we have it in and you'll find that we're not going to have a mirror finish on this with this image but it will still get a bit of reflection you can see it's picking up some of the light from the edges the difference between it if i lower that down is you'll see without the reflection and with the reflection it's picking up some of the light from the sky and you can dial this back depending on how shiny you want that material so if we just zoom out now just to see the material completed that was just a quick video tutorial on how to create a corrugated metal material in V-Ray for Rhino. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to watch any other videos on material creation or rendering in V-Ray and Rhino, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.